Welcome to iPort's TapVision. TapVision is a cloud-based business intelligence reporting package that will transform your data into actionable insights and let you make informed business decisions. Our patents allow us to provide you with unparalleled data reporting to see past performance, predict future revenue, and create profit performance. Today I'll show you some basics on how to navigate TapVision as well as highlight a couple of the reports to show you what kind of data you can gather. So let's get started. Let's go over the interface for TapVision. On the top bar, you can select what location you want to see. Of course, you're only going to see your locations. Next to that, you could drill down by gender. Below that are different ways to sort by date ranges. You can start with a date range by clicking the By Date Range button. And here, you can select the starting date by clicking it and changing it, the ending date the same way, or you can use these sliders to select whichever date you want. You can also do uh, customized ones, such as the last one week. You could do one month. You could do the last seven days. I personally like to come in and see the last seven days or the last month. But for this demo, we're going to do a date range. I'm going to start it with January 1st, 2019, and we'll end it on December 31st, 2019. You can see as I make these changes, the dates, the data actually changes. This bar will change immediately, and the report at the bottom, the graph might take a few seconds to change. It just depends on how many pours you've had during that time range. It could be a very large data set. Um, at the very bottom of the screen, you're also going to see tabs of the available reports. Now, there's more reports on here than there is resolution on your screen or my screen. So you can use these arrows on the bottom left to go left or right to see more of the reports. When you click through, the first time you click the report, if you made a change to any of these uh, items at the top, it will take a second or two for the, the bar graph to show. You can see on this left here, there's a small spinning icon that'll go through as it's updating that. So some of these can take a lot longer because of the data set. Some of these may be quicker. Let's start with some of the occupancy reports. At the bottom left, you're gonna see occupancy by month by gender, by day by gender, hour by gender, and age by gender. If you take a look here on the month by gender, you're gonna see, since we set the range to all of last year, you'll see your occupancy in January, February, March, through the year. You can click on any column here and it will change the data at the top to reflect that data. So in this case, I'm looking at only males in January. There was a total of 1,069. They brought in $15,447 worth of gross revenue, poured 24.2 thousand ounces. Females accounted for 875 people and 13.9 ounces. Not recorded could be because you generated an ID as opposed to scanning an ID, or even some states don't include the gender within the, the, the license. You can click on a month and get the entire month data, or again, each individual column. If you click the column again, it will select everything. If you're selected on one, you can also click outside anywhere and it will go back to a full selection. Day by gender is going to show you the busiest days you have. This would be every Sunday cumulative for the year of 2019. Every Monday, every Tuesday. You can see here, as no surprise, Friday and Saturday are the biggest times. Occupancy by hour by gender. Again, this is cumulative, so you're going to see your busiest times. You have at 1 a.m. a total of, let's see, 644 people that have been there at 1 a.m. during that year. 
at 8 p.m., a total of 10,356 people. If we go to the occupancy by age gender report, you're now going to see the uh, date ranges of your clientele. In this case, the largest is the 25 to 30 year old crowd. And you can, again, click on here and you can see that they brought in for the year of your 583,000, they brought in 110,000. So about 20% of your entire revenue comes from this date range. If you look at the 45 to 50 range, you're down to 25,000 for the year. Let's move on to the style choice volume and product choice volume reports. You can use this data to determine which beverage styles are successful in your location. In this case, IPA is clearly the number one poured style, with ciders coming in second, Hefeweizens in third. If we start with the IPA and click it, you can see the average spend is $13.84. This is per check. Average is $13.84 for someone that has poured IPA. Uh, it shows their ounces and the average, average pour size is 5.2 ounces. A cider goes up a little bit on the average spend to $14.51, but their average ounces has gone down a little bit. If we click on the product choice volume and we look at the IPA, this will drill down and show us a leaderboard of all the IPAs that were poured during our time frame. Uh, in this case, the number one poured IPA is Relax. It's just a hazy IPA. That changes our average spend to $13.96, uh, total ounces of almost 6,000, and an average of five, uh, five ounces per pour. If we go to the second one, so you can see the average total spend changes and the total ounces and average ounce changes. If we click on a cider, we can see the number one cider port is a zombie killer. Average spend is higher than when they drink an IPA. The average ounces here is a little bit lower. This is good information to make sure you keep stock of what is actually selling. You may have an IPA that is way down on the list that you didn't sell much of at a higher price, but if it was sitting there for a long time, it wouldn't be worth taking up your tap handle. Now let's move on to the gross revenue alcohol by month report. This is gonna show you every month and the style that was poured. The average spend is now a per pour spend. You'd have your total ounces for the year and the average ounces poured. Let's go, let's start with cider here. Right off the bat by clicking cider, it's gonna highlight this blue column here of cider for each month. What I've noticed, March, if I click off, you can see March is at 84,222 ounces. And if we go to August, we're at 85,119, so only about a thousand more ounces. So these are our top two months. When I click on cider, you can see in March, we had $4,000 of revenue for cider. And in August, we have 8,000 in revenue. What that tells me is during the warmer months, people are gonna go to ciders over other choices. So as the warmer months come along, I'm gonna to wanna to put more ciders on. You're also gonna see the average spend here is $3.23 per pour of cider. An average ounces is four and a half ounces. So we're looking at about uh, 72 cents per ounce here. So if I can get more people to drink it as the warmer month, or the, yes, as, as the warmer months hit, then I will be making more per ounce. Now let's move on to a red wine. If uh, It's easier to click out so that it uh, they are not grayed out, easier to read. So let's go with red wine. And here we can see our average spend every month. There's no real big outlier. Um, you know, this is at 2,000. 
where this is at four, but you can see there was an increase in total volume during that time period. But with the red wine, we can see an average of three and a half ounces are poured for an average spend of $6.38, which works out to about $1.80, $1.85, something like that. So I encourage you to log in, check out all these other reports, and start learning about your business. This is a cloud-based system, so you can have access to these reports anywhere in the world at any time. Thank you.